Hello and welcome to PodCoder. In the introduction video of this series, I have mentioned that our main goal in this series is to create an app from an idea to deployment. So what basically I am trying to do in this series is to simulate the real life software development process. To do that, I mean to develop any software if it is your own idea or you are working as a freelancer and you got an offer from a, a customer or you're working at a company to deliver a high quality app what you need to do is to follow the SDLC so what is the SDLC so it is a software development life cycle basically it is a series of steps that you can follow uh, to deliver a high quality app and in this series at the first or at the beginning we have the planning uh, we have the analyzing we have the design, we have implementation, we have testing and integration, and also we have the maintenance. So let me explain all these steps. So basically, in the software development lifecycle, at the beginning, as I mentioned, we have the planning and requirement gathering. In this step, you take the inputs or requirements from the customer and then analyze the inputs and, and requirements uh, to understand it very truly and also take the inputs from the expert domain expert sorry from the domain expert what do i mean by domain expert suppose if you are developing an app for an inventory so you need to take the domain expert in the inventory domain in the inventory domain uh, besides your uh, customer inputs because sometimes customer knows uh, his job very well but unfortunately he or she might not be able to give you a very true inputs a very uh, inputs that help you to to know all the details about the project be because if you know the details about the project or the product then you are able to deliver a high quality app so the next thing is that Based on the inputs that you got from your customer and also from the domain expert, you plan your project based on the, that information. And also in this step or stage, you define risk associated with the project. If you define the risks, what risks might be associated with this project, then it will help you to minimize the risks. And there are some tools that you can take help or advantage of for the software development lifecycle for the planning part. And the first one and my recommended one is Project Libre, which is a, a fully open source and also free application that you can take advantage of. And even most of these uh, high companies like IBM and Cisco and other companies like Boeing, they are using it okay also you have microsoft project microsoft project is a really good and powerful app but unfortunately it is costly and it is not free and um, you have jira which is free and provided by atlassian and also if your apps are uh, small you can use uh, trello and uh, um, asana i mostly my prefer one is the uh, what you can say the asana you can just log in and create an account that's very easy and then you can create a project here a blank project to plan your project so let me call this one as for set and I am able to give some information about this some description here is okay here is the description so you can also choose the default view but unfortunately this is not uh, fully free because uh, some features like timeline and also adding private member to the project these are uh, for the uh, premium version but for most of the uh, time this will work fine for you as it did for me so I'm going to create this one uh, what you can say uh, private for me and create project so basically what you have is here the project logo and also the project name and you have some 
kind of view if you use the list view you will see it like this but if you uh, choose it as a board or timeline is not free for the uh, free version not available for the free version calendar is there and mostly I use the board version here are some to do to do uh, uh, tasks that I'm uh, we want to do and also the progress which we are currently work on and also the completed task suppose I am creating a task and this task is called authentication uh, we want to do authentication for our app and also we are able to assign it to this person and suppose we want to complete this task on 14 and uh, we are uh, suppose we are adding description here and also we are able to add some subtasks like in the login uh, we have login and also we can create that this login should be worked on 10 and completed on 10 and then uh, we have the registration so registration and we can also assign this task to someone and also make a timeline for it suppose this is also needs to be done tomorrow and with some comments so some comments here so basically you are creating all your to do's here that this task needs to be done and uh, if you are working on that you can just drag and drop it here which is in, in, in the progress and also when it's complete you can move it in the done part and also you can mark it as a complete so it is finished okay and also you are able to add some columns here it's if uh, like needs to be suppose needs to to be approved suppose by some you have some a task that needs to be approved by someone I mean you are able to create as much as columns you want or you can delete it okay so this is the uh, Asana app that I am using for most of the time and it really helps you if you're developing an app you can take advantage of these tools it it will uh, is, is speed up your development and also uh, it's really good because these apps provide much flexibility okay also you have the Trello Trello is also same as Asana and it is also not completely free you can take both of them I mean it's not that much most of the time they are the same I in my idea they are the same thing if suppose see everything is but everything is the same but the the, the interface is a little bit different okay <clears throat> The next phase that we have is defining the requirements so once we have the requirements and also we have planned for it we need to clearly define and document the requirements of the product and also uh, analyze the SRS or software requirement specification most of the time this software requirement specification is provided by the uh, customer and then once we clearly defined and also read uh, this uh, SRS we need to <clears throat> create a document and also approve it by the customer because in my experience this is a really uh, crucial work that a software a software uh, developer or a software engineer in general needs to do because if you don't approve the document mean the requirements or uh, by the by the customer the chances are if you move along at the middle of the project I mean at the middle of uh, something they will say no I didn't say this one I want this one or something like this so this is a good practice for a, a software developer software engineer to always do and do follow this one and tools that you can do it like LibreOffice which is completely free and also Microsoft Office and Microsoft Office Word in particular to can to create a document for this okay the next phase is to design the product and prototype it the the if you rem if you see till now we are even not writing a single line of code why we are doing all this stuff because we want to deliver a high quality product for this in this part we are designing the app we are creating a visual representation and prototype uh, prototype of the product and for this we need the customer to review our design so what we are doing is to take some advantage of some tools like Adobe XD, Invasion, which are completely free, and also Lunacy, which is only for Windows, and Sketch, which is for Mac, but this Sketch is not free. You can use these tools. Let me show you. You can use these tools like Invasion, um, 
you you can design your app like this if you have with all the specification that you gathered you just uh, you, what you do is you create a design of the app and then you review this design by the user what is a stakeholder because it is really easy it is really completely easy for you to just here drag and drop drag and drop and then design your app and it's done if if this user says no i don't want this color then you can change it or suppose i i want more attractive or more with this with that and all the requirements you just designing it like like you designing an image or just uh, changing an image you're not um, coding because um, until now you're not even brought a single line of code so you can Take the advantage of these tools. My preference is Adobe XD, which is, uh, which is a comprehensive and reliable tools for uh, designing and uh, prototyping the application. And we will do it in the uh, next uh, video. Uh, so we'll design our app. Uh, you can use to design your app. And here is the actual work that we need to do. We need to define our programming language and also we need to choose our IDE and we need to code and just build the application. So after following all these steps, here we have the whole idea, we have the design and it is really easy for us. We just start coding and remember that here we need to create an architecture also. We need to, in the designing part, we need to just focus on one architecture also for our app. And here is the actual code. We are just coding. We know the whole idea. We have the design. We have everything. So it's become really easy for us, really easy to develop. And the last two steps are testing and deployment and also the maintenance. So these are the steps which we do after uh, building the product. Basically, first of all, we test internally the, the app before launching it to the public. If there, in, in any case, we have some bugs or errors, we are trying to solve it here. And uh, the last part is the maintenance. If you want to uh, maintain your app or if you want to expand it or whatever you do. So basically, these are the software development life cycle. I'm not an expert in this field, but these were my and these were my experience that I uh, shared with you. And it is really a good practice for you uh, to just follow these steps. And uh, whether you're working at a company, a freelancer, or you're working by your own. And the last part I want to tell you is about the uh, IDEs and editors. My favorite IDE for uh, developing Laravel application is PHP Storm and it provides uh, much flexibility but unfortunately it is not free but uh, you have uh, something if you are a student or a teacher you can get a free educational license which is for one year and also extendable so basically you just type JetBrains free educational license and uh, here is the link and you, you can go through it and uh, also Visual Studio Code is my favorite when I'm developing uh, like uh, Flatter uh, apps or uh, any JavaScript uh, frameworks like Vue, Angular or something. So these are all uh, the things that I wanted to tell you in this uh, tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe and hit the bell button so you'll be no notified about the upcoming videos.